All right, so this is gonna be a very quick down and dirty video. Uh, no fancy graphics or anything like that. I just wanted to talk a little bit about the ATN PS31-3W uh, night vision device. Um, I own this particular set, it belongs to me. I purchased it outright. And uh, we'll talk a little bit later on in the video about my experience with it. But I wanted to make this video because uh, this particular set of nods, and it's hard to find real solid data on it on the internet. And this is not going to be a very like scientific video or anything else like that. Uh, but I, you know, I do believe that there is a specific buyer for this set of nods, um, especially when you're looking either to get into night vision or you're into night vision and you're looking to upgrade what you have. And um, <clears throat> like I said, when I purchased this set, uh, I found it very difficult to find any kind of solid data. There's a few articles online here or there, uh, but really ATN is not very helpful. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and they don't do a very good job at describing exactly what this is, number one. And number two, there is very little user documentation of what it's like to use these on a daily basis or nightly basis, if you will. And, you know, how they operate, what they work, what are their specifics, um, you know, what the spec sheet looks like for these, if there is a spec sheet, and then uh, just general, what what is the experience of using these? Um, real quick disclaimer before I get started, I will let you know that I am not a knight, or let me replace or rephrase that. I am not, and uh, obviously I'm not a YouTube expert, um, but I am not an ATN expert. I'm aware of a lot of the products that ATN makes. Um, I have used some of them in the past, such as their thermos, so on and so forth. Uh, but this is the very first ATN uh, night vision set that I have ever owned and that I have used extensively. I will tell you that I do have night vision experience as an end user. I have used pretty much every set of night vision devices that the military has issued uh, with the exception of the GPNVGs, those quad nods. Um, I don't have extensive experience with them. I have messed with those before, but it's not something that I have used for work. However, I have used everything from your seven deltas uh, and uh, on up from there, your PVS 14s, your uh, the PVS 31s, um, of which these are very similar to, and then uh, the ENVGs, the PSQs, those are both, the ENVGs are the newer uh, that the Army is issuing, uh, dual tube white phosphor with um, an overlay, a thermal overlay, and then previous to that, the PSQ 20s, which were monoculars that were green phosphor with thermal overlays. So. I have some experience with night vision devices as an end user. And so going forward, I'm gonna relate a lot of things to that. And I think it should be helpful to a lot of the viewers because what you really wanna know is how does this work? How's it gonna work for me? And um, <clears throat> is it gonna last? Are the capabilities true to what the spec sheets or what I find online say? And uh, ultimately, is it is it worth is it worth my money, right? Uh, that's what I thought when I was purchasing these. Is it gonna be worth my money and am I, am I gonna get the use that I intend to get out of these? So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the ATN PS31 3W. All right, so I'm gonna start by opening these up. Now, this pouch here, just uh, for, for reference, this pouch is actually mine. I purchased this at tnvc.com. I do have other night vision that I've purchased from them in the past. Super, super useful pouch. Again, not to plug TNVC, uh, but they make some real good stuff, both uh, in night vision sales and then as far as products and peripherals that'll help you out. But this is it right here, the ATN PS31 3W, right? And I would normally apologize because there's dust, on them and uh, they just, they look like they've been worn and used and I'm not gonna apologize because they have been worn and used and that's part of this review and I, it's part of the motivation that I had uh, before making them, uh, correction, before making this review. Uh, but, you know, over here, try to get some dust off of it. I'm not even gonna try. I'll be honest with you, I use these quite often, uh, both personally and uh, professionally, believe it or not. So. 
Uh, here we go. What is the ATN PS31 3W? All right. So very simply put in layman's terms, the ATN PS31 3W is a dual tube white phosphor uh, binocular device in a BNVD style housing. All right. What that means is that uh, the housing articulates. Right. So you can flip either one pod up individually and use just one pod or you can flip both pods up simultaneously. Just get them out of your field of view. So they are articulating. Then the housing is in the style of the BNVD housing or for uh, my military personnel, the PVS 31 housing that we are accustomed to using. All right. Um, this particular model is the, like I said, the PS 31 dash three W the three and the three W I assume alludes to the fact that these are generation three tubes that are in here. And the W of course would be for white phosphor. ATN does offer multiple versions of these guys. They do offer a green phosphor version. I believe those are just called the, uh, PVS or correction PS 31, the PS 31, um, and then, uh, you, I don't know that they offer a gen two plus version or something like that. Uh, I do believe that other tubes are gen three, uh, but I could be wrong. So you guys correct me in the comments. However, this is the, uh, three W version. So this is the white phosphor. Um, and that was part of the deciding factor for me when I chose this set. So again, binocular white phosphor. Generation three tubes in a BNVD style housing or the PBS 31 style housing for my military personnel, what you're used to. All right. Like I said, this set is personally owned by me and personally used by me. So don't mind all this crazy stuff like these rubber bands and all this other things that I have on here. I kind of just I like this because when I have my nods and uh, <clears throat> I set them down on a hard surface, right? I kind of am not setting the housing directly on there. There is like a little bit of buffer between the housing itself, the tubes, right? The pods and the hard surface that I'm setting them up on. Just personal preference thing, something that I like to do. Again, um, you know, that'll come with uh, however you run your stuff. So let's talk a little bit more about what this is and what it isn't, okay? And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you some of my personal experience with them, i.e. how much have I used them, where and in what kind of environments have I used them, and where they have excelled for me and my use, and where I might have found them to be a little short. And I'm not going to tell you, honestly, whether this is a good buy for you or not, but I will tell you a little bit about what the factors that led me to choosing this set for myself, um, what those factors were. And then um, hopefully you can find some relatable factors there that'll make you, uh, or that'll give you a clearer picture of what is good for you and uh, whether this set is actually something that you might consider when you're looking into dual tube articulating night vision. All right. so. When I was looking for a set of dual tube uh, night vision, um, I kind of drew from some of my military experience. Uh, like I said, I, I've had the opportunity to use many different sets of night vision uh, coming up in the military. And um, I was looking for something uh, that was familiar to me. And that's automatically I was drawn to the BNVD style housing, the PVS 31 style housing. It's just, again, something that felt familiar to me um, so there are many other options of dual tube and even articulating dual tube night vision out there, but the PVS 31s were something that were very familiar to me and that BNVD style housing, i.e. the way everything is set up, the way things are stacked with, you know, the, uh, selector switches, the battery cap, all sorts of other stuff just kind of felt familiar to me. And so automatically I was drawn to these. I did look around. Uh, for different type of night vision. And of course, uh, price was a factor. It was not the single determining factor for me, uh, but it was a factor. Otherwise, uh, you would be looking at a video of uh, PVS 31s because I would have just purchased those and move on with my life since that's exactly what I've been using 
uh, for the longest time in my military career. But <clears throat> I wasn't necessarily looking for a clone of PVS-31s. There were features that the PVS-31 lacks that I was looking for in other dual tube night vision. And it just so happened that these guys had a little bit of uh, those features integrated into them. Um, and, you know, in this video, we'll talk about whether those features are actually useful and whether they are true to what ATN tells us that they do. Real quick, without getting into craziness, ATN advertises the figure of merit for these guys or the FOM, for those of you that are a little bit more versed in night vision, to be somewhere around 1800. It says greater or correction, it says less than 1800. Uh, to 1800, I believe that's what their spec sheet says. So again, decent form, uh, but not anything to write home about. The big difference as far as performance between the tubes that are in this guy and the tubes that are in the military issue PVS 31s is the figure of merit, of course, is a lot lower along with a couple of other specs because the tubes in here, um, are not the same tubes, right? The tubes that are in the uh, PVS 31s are L3 uh, unfilmed tubes, pretty much some of the highest grade stuff that you can get. So the performance is gonna be, again, some of the highest grade performance that you can get. But I will tell you, um, and before I say anything else about that, ATN is not really good about providing spec sheets for their night vision, okay? Um, I found it extremely difficult to find any real solid information about the tubes that are in these guys right here, short of taking the housing apart and pulling the tubes out. Uh, what I have managed to find is that these are probably some uh, L3 thin filmed tubes. Again, thin filmed, not unfilmed. So some L3 thin filled, uh, thin filmed um, tubes that you know, have pretty good performance. And we'll talk about that later on, but have pretty good performance, but of course, nowhere near the performance at the unfilmed Pinnacle uh, L3 tubes that are in the military issue PVS 31s have. Uh, but figure merit, I, I found to be somewhat consistent with what they claim around 1800. So good enough for uh, good enough for me and honestly, good enough for government work. And we'll talk about that <laughs> a little bit later, but yeah. These guys, uh, again, pretty solid performance, nowhere near the top tier, top grade stuff, but it is also nowhere near the top tier, top grade price um, that you're looking at, right? Um, I believe these guys are going right now, uh, I think ATN is asking $7,299, I think is a general stock price for these guys. Um, that could vary a little bit up or down a couple hundred bucks. If you look around uh, some of the websites, Optics Planet, I think sells it for $7,300. I believe $7,300 is the price that I paid for the set alone. There is an optional battery pack that you can also purchase. That's a few hundred bucks. And I honestly can't remember how much that cost. I do have a battery pack for them. The battery life on these guys. Okay. Uh, ATN claims, I believe, uh, let's see here, 60 hours with one CR-123, okay? So that is another big difference between the uh, PVS-31s. The battery housing in here is set for the CR-123 batteries. Excellent batteries, fantastic, especially if you are using lithium, which I suggest you always use lithium with your night vision devices or any of your expensive electronics but they are CR-123s. They are slightly more expensive and slightly more difficult to find uh, than your AA batteries, okay? There is not a, any kind of adapter that where you can adapt this to use AA's. It uses CR-123s, like a lot of other night vision, all right? But that is a big difference between these guys and the PVS-31s. So ATN claims 60 hours of use with uh, CR-123. 300 hours of use if you use the battery pack. The battery pack holds four CR123 batteries. So again, battery life, pretty pretty decent, at least as claimed. And we'll talk about whether that holds up or not. Um, environmental rating, AK, uh, ATN tells us it's an IP65. That means it is resistant to drizzling water as well as dirt and things like that from getting in the system. So that's pretty good. Um, 
that's pretty good and i have found that to be true as you can tell these guys are pretty dirty right now uh because again they're used and they're used pretty heavily uh but so that that's a little bit about the durability that is claimed on these guys right now um so how do they work how have they worked for me um what have i found is good what have i found is maybe not so good for my use case and what might be some things to look out for, okay? Uh, guys, as I said, I was not looking for a clone of the PVS-31s. I was looking for the familiarity of the PVS-31, but I did want some features that the PVS-31 did not include. Um, so what are some of those features? IR illuminator, PVS-31 uh, does not include an onboard IR illuminator. This guy claimed to include an IR uh, onboard illuminator, and it does indeed have one. I don't, as, as you can see, there's two of them or two very similar uh, spots right here. I can't remember. I believe the right one is the actual illuminator. The left one is set up to be a light receptor, right? Uh, so that the uh, onboard system can detect how much light is out there, okay? Um, I have used the onboard illuminator. It is fantastic for close quarters use. I've seen some people complain about the fact that it's not so great for distance use. And I'll tell you right now, there has never been a set of nods that I have used where the IR illuminator is good for distance work because that's not what it is for. It's not what it's intended to do. It's intended to use in very low light environments. When you're using these tactically, that means probably a very pitch dark room where there is no ambient light for these guys to pick up, right? There's no none of those spare photons for these guys to pick up and amplify. That's when you click the IR illuminator on, do what you gotta do, and then you move on with your life, right? So onboard IR illuminator, I'll give it a thumbs up. I've used it, close quarters work. Uh, it's It's been fantastic, really no issues. Another difference between this and the PVS 31s is that this one uh, does not have a manual gain. So what that means is, uh, if you'll notice the settings here, and again, don't mind this rubber cap that I put on here, it just makes it easier for me to do work with not, uh, with gloves on. Uh, but if you notice, it's kind of hard to read, and you probably can't see it in the camera. The first position is the off position, that is self-explanatory, the nods are off. The next position is the on position. Again, the nods are on. The next position is, the IR position. Once you set it there, you flip from the on to the IR that automatically turns on the IR illuminator, right? To give you some more, introduce some photons into the atmosphere so that you can get a better picture. All right. And then the last position is an auto position. As I said, there is no manual gain. There is auto gain. So what that means is that this guy is going to automatically adjust the gain based on the amount of light that it is reading that it is taking in. All right, some people love this feature, some people hate this feature. All right, if you're used to using um, your uh, PVS 14s with uh, manual gain, you can turn it up a little bit more if you feel that you're not getting a good a good picture. You can turn it down if the light is a little bit stronger, you have stronger ambient light. Um, this guy will do it automatically for you. With the manual gain, there's some misconception that, well, you get a better picture because you can dial it all the way up. That's not necessarily true at all. Uh, the manual gain will only go as far as it goes. And so with all these systems with automatic gain, it's the same thing. If it detects that light is low enough, it'll turn up the gain as far as it can turn it up for you. Um, and for me, I personally like that. That's one less thing that I have to do, right? I don't have to uh, sit here and mess with a button and adjust the gain. I let the nods do it for me. Um, <clears throat> I haven't really had any issues with the nods kind of... Uh, flaking out on me and not adjusting the gain as well as it should. They're pretty, pretty, um, pretty good with that. I really haven't had any issues. Like I said, I walk into a room, if it is darker, the gain goes up. It is what it is. The picture, of course, the image turns a little bit grainier, but if you're familiar with Nod's usage, that is just a byproduct of working in very low light environments, right? And I know some people might, might ask, well, aren't Nod's for night use? And they are, but you know, you got to understand that um, these guys still require some ambient light, okay? Whether that's light from the moon or from another light source or anything else, there needs to be some photons that these guys can pick up and amplify for you. It's not a magic solution. Um, it, it doesn't make an image out of anywhere. That's just how night vision works. It is for low light environments. 
not necessarily for no light environments. And when you're put into a pitch dark room with very little to no ambient light, that's when the onboard IR illuminator really comes into play. And I'm glad that this set has it. And this was one of the deciding factors for me because it's something that I use very often. Okay. Um, the articulating pods. Let's talk about the articulating pods. Very similar in style to what the PVS 31s or the standard BMVD housing uses. It has these stops right here, which are fantastic. What these stops allow you to do is I do this often when these guys are on my helmet, right? And rather than flipping them upwards and shifting all that weight forward, I leave the nods in their position and I articulate the pods up just like so, right? Well, what happens is when I need my pods again, now what do I do, right? I can flip them back down, but the, pup the pupillary distance, that is the distance between each pod and my eye, might not be exactly what it used to be if I didn't have these stops. These stops here are adjustable and it's probably hard to see on the camera, but they protrude out here. And what it does is it allows me to set it to a particular pupillary distance. And no matter how many times I open them up, and I close them back down again, they're gonna stop at the same distance so long as these guys aren't moved, right? Um, the one thing I do find about this ATN's particular housing is that the pupillary, the pupillary stops, the screws are kind of loose, right? So what that means is they work fantastically when they're working. However, if you bump them too much, you're gonna mess with your pupillary stops and then you're gonna come down and find that you are not where you want it to be, okay? Um, some things that I have found, you can, um, and again, I, I imagine that not every housing is the same. Uh, so yours might be a little bit more rigid when you find them, but it's just the way mine were, particularly this left tube right here, as you can tell, kind of screws in and out um, pretty easily or a little easier than it should. Um, but um, if you use any kind of like um, uh, Loctite, like the blue Loctite, it helps a little bit um, to just kind of keep it where it is. Otherwise, really, it's not a big deal. It's nice to have. It's absolutely not necessary. It works 90% of the time for me. So that is good enough. Um, and again, guys, if you're spending big money, $7,000 plus, you might want to look for something more. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I'm coming from a military background, guys. Uh, good enough works just fine for me. I have no issue maybe pumping this a little bit. One thing that I have found is that just because you have um, <clears throat> collapsed your pods, it doesn't mean that you can't just fix this real quick, right? So rather than having to do this while the pods are open and make an adjustment, hey, if you bring it back down and your pods are not where you wanted, the left side's a little off, you can go ahead and just Crank it yourself right here and fix it, and it has enough retention where it holds. So really, not a big deal at all. I'm definitely happy to at least have the uh, pupillary distance stops here. Okay. Another difference between this housing and your standard PVS 31s is the 50 degree field of view. Pretty much any nods that you're going to get out there, uh, or any military style nods, have a 40 degree field of view. ATN has included with their lenses a 50 degree field of view. Now that sounds fantastic, 50 degrees. That's more than 40 degrees. That means that when you used to be able to have a field of view like this, you now should have a field of view like this, right? And it actually is pretty good. Um, unfortunately, there is a slight downside for, uh, for that 50 degree field of view. And what that is, is that you have to get or bring the nods a little bit closer to your face than you normally would, uh, simply because once you move them a little further out, you start to get sort of a fisheye effect around the outside. And I'm gonna include some um, examples of this. I'm gonna you know, include them uh, as a separate clip so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, but you do get sort of a fisheye if the nods kind of become uncentered or you are looking at them a little further than you should. Where this may or may not become an issue, it hasn't become an issue for myself, but where it may or may not become an issue for you is if you use eyewear. I use eye protection when I use these guys, of course. Usually I am uh, using them for work. Uh, so work-wise, I always use my eye protection. I haven't had an issue, but I have noticed that I have to bring the nods a little bit closer to my eye pro than I would 
a standard pair of 40 degree tubes because uh, otherwise you start to get that little bit of a fish eye. It's not terrible, but it is something that you need to become used to or accustomed to. But once these guys are dialed in, they're locked into their position. They're really good about staying where they need to be. And I find that that fish eye effect really is not an issue at all for 